In this video, I check out how Estonians party on a Saturday night. And I also bump into a Nigerian, originally meant to be studying in Ukraine, but stuck in Estonia due to the war. On a fateful Thursday morning, and uh, we had these missiles and uh, you know, windows, everything vibrating. Saturday night in Tallinn Old Town and I want to check out how the nightlife feels like. Come with me. But before I get you to the streets, look on the corridor here. It's like a maze. Ta -da. It's like a maze. Those two women was mom and daughter, really nice, very friendly, came and chat to us. Uh, actually, when we were leaving, you can see from the video that they were really sad that we were leaving. But one funny thing is, mom kept on serving her daughter shots, which is new to me. My mom would never do that to me. Ooh. And we just seen what else we can see. There's a bar next to our hotel. So you've got the YouTube channel from uh, 
So how long were you in Ukraine for? Well, approximately uh, seven years. Ooh, seven years. I studied there and I completed my uh, medical degree. Yeah. Medical degree? Yeah, like uh, medical, finished as a medical. So, like, when the whole thing started, how, how did it feel? <laughs> Well, Let's say you you woke up one day and then well, you heard that we woke up on, on a fateful Thursday morning and uh, we had these missiles and uh, you know windows everything vibrating you know um, the bomb shellings just very close to Haki because it's not in your face um, yeah uh, you know Haki is very very close to um, Russia. So you were in Kaku? Yeah, I was in Kaku. Yeah. And uh, I got a couple of calls. And immediately, um, you know, this pandemonium everywhere was just in, in disarray, chaos everywhere. Um, I could literally see cues, you know, uh, from the kitchen. Because you know, uh, there was this um, gas station, or petrol station. So everyone was just lying up trying to get you know their own share to you know, to escape and you know, we didn't know what to do we were confused no money literally had to wait for my pay you know. eventually you know we got this lucky um let's say these samaritans that you know, took us alongside we spent approximately three days, three days on the road traveling you know, traveling trying to connect to Lviv you know uh, just to exit uh, the, the country and um, uh, thankfully we were lucky and thank God that everything went smoothly. Uh, managed to get you know our hands on a few luggage and eventually um, moved on to Lviv. From Lviv we went to Ushgorod and Ushgorod we moved to Slovakia and that was the first part of call. Oh, okay. So, uh, it's not so like it's not been an interesting so entering Estonia. How were you received? No, it, well, it's it's a case of mixed feelings, you know. Uh, first of all, we we're giving the impression that okay, everything everything is okay. Like um, immediately we got to the borders, they checked our documents, you know, um, cleared everything, and told us that look, you are eligible to. Be in the country, and all of a sudden we were just surrounded and uh, you know gathered in a place because three of us, you know, we said uh, country nationals, like we were gathered, and they were like, "You are illegal in our country. You didn't come with a visa, and you ought not to be here." So um, the least we can do for you is um, for you to apply for international protection not the temporary protection given to ukrainians you know we, we asked for that and uh, we were coerced to sign some documents even against our own will and um, you know currently most of us are in a mess uh, because some people don't even have a place to stay and um, it's really heartbreaking that you know people from a war zone came to this territory uh, although they, they provided us uh, with shelter for the uh, few months we stayed. Um, but we already had we had those signs that look we were well welcomed in this place. So it's, it's uh, something that we never expected. So, but we are still striving, still pushing. So, what was the what was the <coughs> the way forward? The way forward for you. So, the way forward uh, for me. Uh, there's been some contingency plans in, in the sense that uh, I've actually applied for a master's program ahead of time and uh, somehow uh, it's materialized, but yet we are still blocking that much, claiming that um, I'm illegal and I don't have the right to move over to this country, or to that country specifically, which is a neighboring country, not too far. Um, so uh, I had to take up the case uh, to the court and uh, uh, something I never expected to get to this point. But uh, hopefully I'm, I'm trusting and believing that everything will happen. So how is the family taking it back home? 
it's not been easy. Yeah. It's not been easy because um, you know where we come from. Uh, things are not really as smooth. Really. So here they are looking up to you. Um, and um, having explained the situation, they only just doing their bit and trying to be optimistic, praying, hopeful, and everything will work out. So do you work now? How are you surviving in well, Estonia? Well, uh, for now, for now, I do work. I work um, remotely. Um, I do some part-time teaching. Okay. So I use that to yeah, just um, keep body, mind and soul together. Yeah. You know, so, thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I hope everything yeah. works out. Yeah, it's just, you know, yeah. Nightlife in Tallinn, Old Town. Um, it's really good. We started with a meal and then we went to labor. It's like a laboratory. They, they serve you your drinks in test tube and that. Um, it was all packed and then after that we went to Hollywood. Um, people are friendly. The funny thing is, people kept on coming to me asking for cocaine, um, <laughs> which I just laugh about it. it. It is what it is. But yeah, it was a nice evening. Um, yeah, had had good fun. Trying to find our way to the hotel. Which side of the bus? Is that side? Anyone? Anyone? Oh yeah, yeah. so you can go here. Yeah. You can go there. Anyone? One thing is, did you think that in Estonia the women are more covered covered up? In the nightclubs. I would believe that would be because of the, the weather. The, the weather, the weather, isn't it? The weather yeah. People were wearing like a lot of trousers. The weather definitely. But I think also they are more covered up because yeah. in England it will be cool and those girls will still wear the short skirts. Yeah. You would see them with cool bumps like <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Why, why don't you just cover by? I guess it's the culture as well. Yeah. The culture yeah. just probably different. Yeah, the women are more covered up, they wear a lot of trousers. Um, as TJ said, it might be the culture or it might be the cold. Um, after the club is shut, everyone is very peaceful. People are not shouting on the streets and they are not making noise. Those who are going home with their boyfriends are going in peace. And one thing I also realized is with my camera at night in Estonia here, I felt more like secured. I wasn't hiding it, I don't know. Like, I couldn't do that in Poland. I feel like I had a lot of hostile, you know, looks and stuff like that. But over here, it was all friendly would you, looks. Would you not say probably because maybe I'm the water, they don't want that? Maybe, maybe. But here, it's more chilled out and no one was looking at my camera. People, like people will approach you when they see you holding your camera and that. So yeah, it's been a good night. I'm going to sleep. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.